O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne, thy saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame. From everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone. Short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Time like an ever-rolling stream bears all its sons away. They fly forgotten as a dream dies at the opening day. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be Thou our guide while light shall last, and our eternal Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Sunday Morning Mass here at St. Martin's Chapel. Blessing to be with you guys today. A good Bible study, I thought, today as we continue to go through uh, the liturgy of the Holy Mass. Um, so here we are today on this 14th Sunday in the end of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you my brothers, my sisters. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by confessing our sins to God and one another. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry. And I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me. And in your compassion, renew me with your Spirit, so that cleansed of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. May Almighty God forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his peace people on earth. earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. All powerful Father, your Son surrendered his glory and took upon himself the form of a slave that our world, sick with sin, might be healed. Fill your faithful ones with a holy joy 
so that those who have been rescued from their slavery to sin may delight in your peace, which knows no end. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel, as the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. Mm. And they and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart, are they to whom I am sending you? But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whenever they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, rebellious house, they shall know the prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial song will be our lives, our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To lift to you, I lift up my eyes who are enthroned in heaven as the eyes of servants are the hands of their masters. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. As the eyes of a maid are the hands of her mistress, our, our eyes of the Lord our God, till he has pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have pity on us, O Lord. Have pity on us. For we are more than sated with contempt. Our souls are the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. The second reading, the reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might have not become too elevated because of the abundance of my revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elevated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might be, leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for the power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weakness in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with my weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, constraints, for the sake of Christ. For then I am weak, then I am strong. The, Lord, the world of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he sent me to bring glad tidings to, to the poor. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all of this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people and laying his hands on them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. God is good, amen? All the time. All the time. Praise God for another beautiful day and the ability to be here again in, in the chapel, you know. 
I'd like to read one verse for our homily today, for the basis of this uh, this message from our epistle reading, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Something worth memorizing. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord God, most merciful Savior, we thank you, O Lord, for this beautiful day you've given us. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in the chapel, to worship you, to hear your word, to offer our prayers and our praises. Lord, may this message now bless us, may it touch our hearts, for all of us here as well as for all those that are watching today. And may it speak to us directly where we're at and help us realize, O oh Lord, that it's the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Paul writes, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Those are the words of Christ given to the Apostle Paul. He said he had something, a thorn of Satan. And he prayed to the Lord three times, he says, that God takes it away. But the Lord didn't take it away. He had a bigger lesson and a bigger blessing for Paul to receive in the midst of the suffering. This message relates to all of us. They may even uh, prick at us a little bit, these words today. For here we see a very humble side of the Apostle Paul. We learn a very personal side. We also, through the scriptures, see a very personal side of Christ as well. For both of them are talking about the same issue. Maybe what we see is even more human in Paul and Christ than we really want to see or accept or think about. Paul was human, wasn't he? Yes. He was a man just like any one of us. He had ups and downs. He had struggles. He had difficulties with speaking, difficulties with seeing, difficulties with writing, spent most of his time as he preached in prisons, traveled all around, stoned, beaten, thrown out of places, and all kinds of things happened to him. But he was also faced with human frailties that every one of us in this room here have today, if we're going to be honest with ourselves. And Jesus, although God, yes, he still was human in the flesh. And he faced the reality of humanity in its absolute fullness. Jesus struggled just like we struggle. He was tempted as we were tempted, the scripture says. And he suffered because he is the Son of God. We read in our text today that the people thought, what did it say? They took offense at Christ as he went out and did what he did. We are human just like Jesus and Paul. We are human. That's our human, human side. So we can learn some very valuable things, I think, today from these lessons of Paul and Jesus to take home with us if we're willing to be open and accept our own frailties. Paul, let's start there. Paul, the great apostle who preached all over the world, at the time, and wrote a big chunk of the New Testament as we have it before us today. He suffered greatly in body and soul, and he suffered with his own sin sometimes. Paul said, I don't do what I want, for sin dwells in me. He said, I know the good to do, that's not what I don't do. I know the bad things I do that I don't want to do, but that's what I wind up doing. <laughs> And so we struggle. You struggle with sin? Oh man, I do too. We do all the time. He faced the same battles of doing right and wrong that we face today. There's a spiritual battle raging in every single one of us that live for Christ today. We can either live for Christ or we can live for self. That's the battle within us. Our desires can either be for Christ or our desires can be our passions of our heart. 
That's the battle we face today. And yes, we all struggle with right and wrong. We all struggle with right and wrong. Why? Because we're all human. We're all human. Paul also faced a physical battle. Like some of us here today. We have chronic illnesses. We have acute problems. We have all these different things. Paul says he was given a thorn in the flesh to buffet him. And he prayed to God on three separate occasions, it says, that God would take it away from him. <laughs> Sounds like us, doesn't it? God gave us certain things that we have to deal with in this life. He let them happen to us. And he doesn't always take it away when we pray about it. Lord, I have this addiction. Take it away. Huh? Lord, I have this physical ailment. Take it away. Lord, I don't feel good today. Take it away. All oh, sounds good, doesn't it? And the list goes on and on of the things we want God to simply take away. And yet in all of this, the Lord did not take any of Paul's problems away. And sometimes he doesn't take our problems away either. Because he wants us to learn something through them. Yeah. He didn't leave us to suffer to put us down. He lets us suffer sometimes to teach us a more valuable lesson than experience his healing graces at the moment. Yeah. In our text for today, Jesus answered Paul when he prayed. Paul says, he answered me. And, and Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. We want the healing. God teaches us dependence on him. We want our suffering to go away. God wants to use our suffering for his glory. And that we might learn something and draw closer to him. We only see our weaknesses. Yet in our weaknesses, God is revealing his power. In Romans 8, the Bible says, We know that God makes all things work together for good for those who love God. Who love our suffering. God uses for our good. That's hard to imagine this day. Why would a loving God allow us to suffer? Mm -hmm. Because he loves you so much to get past the suffering and see him in the midst of the suffering. Make sense? I mean, after all, my friends, who's in charge of your life? You might think it's you. <laughs> who's in control of your life? You might want it to be you. Well, guess again. You know, we burn ourselves out so often trying to get what we need. Whether it's through our prayers or our actions, or whether it's through of all the things we try to do. When all along Jesus reach out, reaches out his hand and he simply says, come to me. You know, he said that to, not to the people that have everything going good for him. He said, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll take all of your problems away, right? No. He said, I'll give you rest. Right. Rest in the midst of the problems that we face because he wants us to see him. Like we said in Bible study today, it was interesting, whoever brought this up, that when people go through struggles, one of two things happen. They either get angry, blame God, and go farther away, or they see God working in their life while they're recovering from surgery or going through struggles. And they get closer to God in the midst of all the difficulties. I'm a firm believer that when we struggle, that's when we're the closest to Christ. Yes. I truly believe yes. that. We look at something in this life. We look for something in this life that God never promised. We want a life free of pain. He never promised that. We want a life free of worries. He never promised that. We want a life without death. He never promised that. 
We want a life without sickness. He never promised that. We want a life without crying. He never promised that. We want a life in which we're happy all the time. He never promised that. You know when we receive no crying or pain or worries or suffering and we always are joyful and have peace and happy? The Bible says in Revelation 21 and 22, those are all the things that will happen to us in heaven, not this life. This life shows us our weaknesses, doesn't it? <laughs> this life shows us our pains and how frail we are. This life teaches us about our insecurities. This life teaches us how easy it is for fall to, to, to fall into sin. But the scripture says, thou shalt not. And we go, no, that's exactly what I'll do. <laughs> but all of these things are used to lead us to Christ. So what helps us on our journey in this life more than anything else? Anybody venture a guess? It's participating in the Holy Mass. Right. What do you mean? Participating in the Holy Mass. Not just sitting around, watching the priest, watching what's going on, daydreaming, thinking about the Packer game, or in your case, the Bears game, <laughs> or thinking about the Brewers, or what I'm going to do this afternoon, or the cookout. No, 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 no. It's not just sitting around watching everybody else, but it's participating with our whole being, mind, body, and soul. And then walk with Jesus through his life, his death, his resurrection, and participate in the anticipation of his glorious return. That's what the Mass is all about. All this is experienced if we participate in the readings, the singing, the hymns, the prayers, the confession, the Holy Eucharist. See, our weakness is overcome as we participate today right. in the Mass, as we're here in God's presence. When we dialogue with the Almighty God, think about it. We dialogue with the Almighty God. He invites us to come. And we dialogue with Him. We talk with Him. But we got to be willing to do that. You come to Mass tired? Participate and be renewed. Right. Huh? Do you come to Mass weak? Participate and find new strength. Do you come to Mass with doubts in your mind of what it's all about? Participate and everything will be explained to you and you'll learn something. God has called us, guys, here today in our weakness so we can be made strong in our faith through participation in all the blessings God has given us. In our weakness, we call out to God. Amen? Yeah. We call out to him to find strength, especially when we're weak. Don't let earthly limitations deprive you of spiritual and eternal strength by saying, I can't help it, or I'm weak, and that's just the way it is. In our weakness, we call to God for new strength. Listen to the words of the Lord today. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. Why? For power. His power is perfected in weakness. Our weakness. We truly see God's power at work in our life when we are at our weakest moment, our weakest point. For then we have nothing left within ourselves to rely on. Right. And all we can do is turn to God. But yet there is the power of God. Are you tired? Trust in Jesus for power. Are you worn out? Trust in Jesus to fill you back up again. Are you sick? Trust in the power of God. Now your sickness, your being worn out, your being tired might not actually go away the way we want it to. But Jesus said to Paul, my grace huh, is sufficient. God's blessing is sufficient. Whatever it is you struggle with today, and you want God to simply take it away, 
Forget about it. <laughs> Don't focus on the deliverance you want. Focus on Christ and the power of God that he's giving you at that very moment. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most gracious and eternal God, we thank you for this message you've given us today. Help us, Lord, see that in our moments of greatest weakness is where we see your power the most. And help us, O Lord, serve you. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in the words of the Nicene Creed that we have on our worship folder. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Wow. That's a lot. Our response to the prayer today will be deliver us, good Lord. From, from all evil and mischief, from sin, from crafts, the assaults of the devil, from the wrath, wrath <coughs> and from everlasting dominion, damnation. Deliver us, us, O Lord. Lord. From our blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, malice, and from all uncharitableness. Deliver us, O Lord. Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our wealth, in the hour of death, in the day of judgment. Deliver us, O Lord. We see sinners besiege you to hear us, O Lord, that it may please you, guide you, and direct your church in the ways of everlasting life. Hear us, good Lord. Deliver us, O Lord. That it may please you to loom our, our bishop and all who serve our church. A true knowledge and understanding of your word. Hear us, O Lord. That it may please you to rule our hearts and all others in authority, that they may do justice, love mercy, and walk in the ways of, of truth. Hear us, O Lord. That it may please you to guide, direct the members of our judiciary, giving them grace to execute justice and to maintain truth. Hear us, O Lord. Hear us, Lord. May it Please you to bring the way of truth, all those who have fallen into error and heresy. Hear us, good Lord. Lord. May it please you to strengthen those who stand firm, to comfort, to help the weak hearted, to raise up those who feel, fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, Lord. Lord. That it may please you to comfort and assist all who are in danger, necessity. Necessity and tribulation. Hear us, O Lord. That it may please you to preserve all that travel by land and sea, air and space, all women in labor, sick persons, young children, and to manifest 
mercy all prisoners and captives. Hear us, O Lord. That it may please you to defend and provide for father, for fatherless children, for widows, for those who are desolate and oppressed. Hear us, Hear us O Lord. That it may please you to give and, pres and to preserve, to, our new, to use kindly fruits of the earth as in due time that we may enjoy them. Hear us, Hear us O Lord. By your mercy, O oh Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We pray today, especially for Abby and TJ, all the things they're going through. We also lift before you Ed, who kind of did a vanishing act again. We watch over him, Lord. Keep you safe. Lord, uh, we just pray like we're supposed to every week. We pray for those who are being persecuted throughout the world, our brothers and sisters. That you give them strength to not to give in. And that you would bless those who are persecuting them. That they would see you through them. And that you would provide for um, those um, who are being persecuted for their families. And their children and their wives and their mothers and fathers. Lord, we thank you for those people. They give us opportunity to learn about boldness. And we thank you for that. And I also pray for my girlfriend, Patty, as she's going through uh, chemotherapy again this week as a preventative measure for breast cancer. And the shots can hurt her. And we just, and she gets nauseated and tired. And we just ask that you comfort her and keep her from being depressed about it. And we also pray for just our nation, for the up and coming election. That, you, that we would vote for the right person, Lord. You know who that is. And we thank you, Lord, and that there would be no cheating this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just pray for a lot of the homeless on the east side. A lot of the mentally ill that are afflicted. I see it all over the place when I walk around the east side. It's heartbreaking. It really is. Um, every time I go to the grocery store, I see some guy begging or some woman begging. It's, it's hard to just walk by. You have to do something. But what? And just for everybody that is just feeling not uh, comfortable with uh, the world or just what's going on with our country or the people, just we seem to not be our brother's keepers anymore. I don't want. I don't want to be one of those people anymore. I really don't. I just want to try to enjoy life, try to give joy to other people, and just I don't know, just connect on a on a certain level and connect with Jesus. I think when I can connect with Jesus, I can connect with other people also. He gives me the will and the fortitude to keep moving forward, even when I don't want to. And I think that's where, for me, that's where the secret lies. That's it. Amen. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our God, King of the universe, for your bring forth grain from the earth, that 
this gift of yours to come for us, our community, in the body of Christ. Blessed be God forever. Father, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully renewed the dignity of our human nature. Through the water and the wine mingled here, grant us to share in the divine life of Jesus, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our God, King of the universe, who bring forth through the divine the gift of yours may become for us a communion in the blood of Christ. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Father, receive us as we come to this table and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, and seal my lips, O Lord, that I may give you praise. And now let us pray, my beloved brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice in ours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He promised that whenever two or three are gathered together in his name, he will be in their midst, shepherding them until the day when he comes again in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the saints of every time and place, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father most holy, you are worthy of praise, for in Jesus your Son you revealed the depth of your love. Through him you have liberated us from our slavery to sin and death and made us a family where your boundless gifts are revealed. Invited by his love, we have gathered at this altar, and we give you thanks for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. <clears throat> Sanctify them now by the power of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ Jesus. our Lord. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In like manner, after supper, he, he took a cup filled with wine. He gave thanks, he blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. 
Father, as we celebrate this Eucharist, we enter more deeply into the saving work of your Son, the Good Shepherd who leads us along life-giving ways, the Lamb who takes away our sins, the Victor who lives and reigns forever and ever. For at his intercession, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we might become a living sacrifice wholly dedicated to your service. And now taught by the Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from all that is evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and through this Eucharist. Grant us the peace and unity of the kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all who with faith receive. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. By the will of the Father and through the working of the Spirit, your death, O Lord, has brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your commands and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, word, and my soul soul shall be healed. healed. Today, as we receive the body and blood of our Lord Christ in the Holy Eucharist, my prayer is that all of you who are watching today receive him in a spiritual way into your heart and that you trust in him and follow him all your days. Let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. O Lord, may we receive with the pure heart the heavenly food you have given. And may the gift you have given us here on earth sustain us to everlasting life. Mm. And Lord, 
Lord, may your body and blood touch my soul. And your mercy grant that no stain of sin may remain in me, who has been fed with this pure and holy sacrament. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, we have consumed your holy body and blood. Let not the fire of hell consume us. Our eyes have touched your holy face. Let them see your abundant mercy. O Lord of God, we have shared in your holy mysteries. Let us join you in your heavenly abode. Count us among the sheep at your right hand, and we shall sing your glory forever. O bread of life, we have taken you as nourishment in our journey. May the fires of hell not approach us, because the aroma of your holy body and blood emanates from us. O Savior of mankind, through your holy baptism, may we join you in your holy mansion of life and peace forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the name of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. being here today in today's holy mass thank you for those that are watching via youtube and facebook and our prayer is always that the lord blesses you and keep you in all things today let us especially pray for and remember those that suffer with mental illness we never know what they're going to do next you know they suffer they struggle may god have mercy on them we pray amen amen that being said, our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.